Welcome to The Know, I'm Meg Turney, and it's the holiday season, so naturally the console wars are hitting their peak insanity for the year. Microsoft and Sony's attempts to outbundle one another for Black Friday did pay off pretty big, as the two consoles are reportedly among the top five selling electronics for retail's biggest day of the year. But right on the heels of that success comes a quiet update from Sony that could be big news for gamers and developers. On Friday night, a poster at Beyond 3D found evidence that a new SDK update from Sony has unlocked the seventh processor core for PS4, which will allow more CPU power to be used for game development. Eurogamer reports that its sources have confirmed that this is the case, and game developers now have access to the seventh core. This is good news for PS4 for obvious reasons, but especially because Microsoft's Xbox One does have a CPU advantage over Sony's machine, which leans more toward GPU power over processing power. So is this a total game changer? Is Uncharted 4 going to have even bigger set pieces and more quips than ever? Did PS4 just go all Senator Palpatine on us and unlock unlimited power? Well, not really. If you'll remember, Microsoft did this exact same thing last year when they unlocked 50 to 80% of the Xbox One seventh core for additional CPU power, contributing noticeably to a few multi-platform games during CPU-intensive moments, such as heavy traffic in GTA V, Assassin's Creed Unity even saw a 15% performance increase in, in some instances compared to its PS4 counterpart. Now, we don't know how much of this has helped developers in the years since then, but more raw processing power is really never a bad thing. So what's up with all these extra seventh cores, and why do these systems just have them lying around the house collecting dust like some people's unused connects? I still use mine. Both the PS4 and Xbox One use eight core processors, two of which are reserved for the operating system and other background capabilities. Basically, that keeps the operating system and other applications running while you play games. They reserve these in anticipation of the operating system changing over time, and it's always better, you know, of course, to have too much than not enough. Of course, this is where we put in sexual into window, but I'm not doing it, because we're talking about Fitchmo games. Now that we've moved past the tip, oh, that was a cute one. All right, now that we've moved past the tip of the console generation, I got where he was going there, both Microsoft and Sony have a better sense of just how much of those two cores they'll actually need going forward. Now, in Microsoft's case, as they moved away from the Kinect, they actually opened that 50 to 80% of the seventh core in place of giving developers access to in-game voice commands, which means the end of saying shit like, Xbox, say you're crazy to that bitch in Dead Rising. That was so annoying. And of course, why you can't say Xbox, finish the fight after Halo 5's cliffhanger. So what exactly does this mean for the PS4? Yes, some games down the line are going to see noticeable improvements as far as processing power is concerned. Current games probably won't be affected though unless they're patched by the developers and titles that are far into development really won't make much use of the core. We don't know how much of the seventh core is being opened up to developers either. It might even be smaller than Microsoft's 50 to 80%. In reality, the more interesting story here isn't about processing power, but that this might be a signal that Sony is starting to wrap up significant changes to the PS4 interface for the rest of this generation. Opening up a core for developers means that they're not anticipating any more big updates to the operating system, which does beg the question about the lifetime of the current generation and when Sony is going to start shifting toward its next platform. Just earlier this month, Naughty Dog community strategist Arnie Meyer said that Naughty Dog had maybe two more games left in this console generation, leaving some to wonder how long we really have with the PS4. Regardless of how long that time is, it is crazy to think about how much has already changed for both the PS4 and the Xbox One since the release of each of those systems. We've seen a huge emphasis on streaming, a de-emphasis on gestures, and cool new features like the ability to take over someone's controller remotely, which could also be used for very bad things. We're even going to get the official remote play functionality for the PS4 on PC and Mac, as confirmed by Sony's Shuhei Yoshida just this past week, so it's very exciting. Eventually, we're going to see VR adding an entirely new dimension to both consoles within the next year, hopefully. Plus, Nintendo's NX might bring along another game changer. It all remains to be seen. So no matter how much longer the current console generation lasts, you can bet that Xbox One and PS4 will be totally unrecognizable by the time it ends. Probably in ways we haven't even imagined. Also, that's probably, because we have no clue. So what do you think of PS4's new unlocked power? Is the PS4 going Super Saiyan, or is it just a Kaioken? Let us know in the comments. I gotta stop shoehorning Dragon Ball Z things into these scripts. I just love them. To stay up to date on the console wars and to hear all the big changes coming to your system, like this video, and of course, subscribe to this channel so you can know what we know and be the know on this show. Aren't you? Krillin, what are you gonna do? Krillin doesn't do shit. You're not gonna do shit. You just shit. die. Like, yeah. that's all he does.